Let's say you've got loads of money and you want a posh luxury SUV with a sporty edge to it, but you don't want to give the taxman loads of cash. You're going to need the plug-in hybrid and the Bentley Bentayga hybrid is a good choice. But if you're cash savvy, even though you're rich, should you really be spending all that extra on the Bentley Bentayga plug-in hybrid when you could have a Range Rover Sport plug-in hybrid? Is this really twice as good as this car because it's pretty much twice the money? Well, in this video, we're going to find out. And we can do that by comparing their exteriors, their interiors, just how luxurious they are, their technology. I'm going to launch them to see how quick they are from 0 to 60 miles an hour because that matters. Also, we're going to compare their efficiency and how much they will cost you per month. Anyway, I'm Matt Watson and you're watching Car Wow. Yes, you are. Buying a new car? Then head to Car Wow and my team will help you find your next car at a fair price. Car Wow, your one stop car buying comparison site. Let's start this video by comparing these cars' hybrid systems. So this Bentley has a 3-litre turbocharged V6 mated to an electric motor and it puts out 449 horsepower and 700 newton metres of torque. It drives all four wheels via an 8-speed automatic gearbox. This Land Rover also has all-wheel drive and an 8-speed automatic gearbox. However, its engine has two less cylinders than the Bentley's. It's just a 2-litre four-cylinder combined with an electric motor, that it still puts out 404 horsepower and 640 newton meters of torque. What does this all mean for the performance? Well, apparently this Bentley can do 0 to 60 in 5.2 seconds. The Range Rover is supposed to do it in 5.9 seconds. So it seems slower on paper, but is it in reality? Well, we're gonna find out a bit later in this video because I will be launching them and we'll see what the truth really is. I've gone really clocks to me. Oh yes, in the world. I'm going to see what these cars like to drive in town first of all. And I'm going to start with the Range Rover. It will generally let you just drive along slowly on electric power alone. It suits this kind of car just in town when you're just pootling around because it's silent, it's just relaxing. I like it. The only issue comes when you suddenly need to do a manoeuvre and overtake someone. So you floor the throttle. There you go. It does take a while for the engine, the electric motor, the gearbox to all work as one. It's almost as if you're on a Zoom call and there's some kind of like lag with someone's connection and they just keep freezing. It takes a while for you all to sync up. It's not ideal, but it does just about work. And then when you back off again in your electric power, you forget all about it because it's all just relaxed and chilled again. You don't sit quite as high in this Range Rover Sport version as you do the normal Big Daddy Range Rover, but it's still a fairly lofty driving position. And it's a bit more manoeuvrable than you think it would be as well. Easy to do a U-turn. I'll tell you what's good as well, the suspension. Air suspension deals with bumps nicely. Only occasionally do you get a sudden like jolt when there's a real sharp bump, but on the whole, it's rather comfortable, even though it's called the Sport. <laughs> The last thing to mention are the brakes. You see, the brakes can feel a little bit grabby sometimes in hybrids because the first part you're braking actually recoups lost energy and puts it back into the battery. So you're not actually using the normal friction brake to slow down for that first part. You're actually just using the motor in reverse. And that can make the brake pedal feel a bit odd, but the one in this is nice and consistent. I've jumped out of the Range Rover and now I'm in the Bentley. And just like with the Range Rover Sport, it will run in electric power alone. For a certain distance, you get 25 miles if you're very, very careful out of it. And when you're just pooling around, it's just electric only, so it's super quiet and dead easy and relaxing. One thing I like about this Bentley though is it lets you know the transition between being electric and the internal combustion engine coming in by actually putting like a full stop on the throttle pedal. So you feel like you've bottomed out, but you haven't really, because that's actually just for electric power. And then if you push past, almost like a kick down, when the whole system just wakes up then and you get full power because the petrol motor has just sparked into life. And the system works a little bit better in more harmony than that in the Range Rover. It's also not quite as noisy when you put your foot down as well because you've got a six cylinder engine which just is bigger and beefer and it's just got a bit more oomph. So it's a bit more refined, a bit more Bentley-like. So it's also more Bentley-like. While that Range Rover is very comfy, this is even better over bumps. I mean, it's so good, it just soaks them up. I mean, you'd be perfectly fine with the Range Rover, but this, once you've tried this, oh yeah, you're gonna wanna stay in the Bentley. <laughs> One last thing to assess on the Bentayga, brakes. Yeah, they're smooth and progressive. They're not grabby, pretty much as good as the Range Rovers. If you're gonna make the most of these cars' hybrid capabilities, you need to regularly plug them in and charge them up. Yeah, this is ridiculous. Anyway, this Range Rover has a 13 kilowatt hour battery pack and on a seven kilowatt charger, it takes two hours, 45 minutes to fully charge. The Bentayga has a larger battery pack, it's 17 kilowatt hours, yet it's quicker to charge using a seven kilowatt charger. You can do it in two and a half hours. Now, despite this having the bigger battery, it still does the same 25 miles of electric only range as 
the Range Rover. The problem is though that by adding batteries and motors these cars are heavier than their nearest petrol equivalent. For instance this Range Rover hybrid comes in at two and a half tons which is about 200 kilos heavier than the straight six. This hybrid Bentayga comes in at 2.6 tons which is about 200 kilos heavier than the V8 version. How does that affect braking? Speaking of which, this Bentayga has 400mm discs up front and 380mm discs at the back, whereas this Range Rover has 380mm discs at the front and 365mm discs at the back. I think it's time for a brake test to see how well these cars stop from 60 miles an hour. Okay, now I'm going to do a full emergency stop from 60 miles an hour. See how long it takes to stop this big heavy car. Braking now. Oh, oh. It took 35 metres. Now let's try the Bentley. Okay, now I'm going to brake test the Bentayga, see if it can do better than the Range Rover Sport. What's it going to do? Up, 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 up. That's felt pretty good. Oh yes, stop from 60 in 33 metres, so better than the Range Rover. Those two metres could be vital. Hey, just wanted to interrupt the video to give you some news. You can now sell your car through CarWow. All you have to do is upload some photos, give us a brief description of it, then our dealers will bid on your car and the price you're quoted will be the price they actually pay you. They'll even come to your house and take your car away and give you the cash. Now, if you want to sell your car through CarWow, click on the pop-out banner up there, follow the link in the description below. It's dead easy. Now let's talk about the design of these cars, starting with the front. So, the Range Rover Sport, it's just a very simple, good looking SUV. Looks expensive, but it's not too in your face and showy, unlike the Bentley, which is definitely showy, especially when you go for the chrome grille. Say chrome, it's chrome paint because this grille is all plastic. I do like the lights on the Bentley though. Very, very smart and like jewelry-like. However, overall, I think that the Range Rover has the better looking face. That's just a little bit weird. Thankfully, the Bentayga is much better looking from the side. The chrome really works here, actually. It just highlights the body and the shapes and contours in the metal work. And I love this kind of pronounced rear haunches. It looks muscular. Also, on the hybrid version, you can have wheel sizes up to 22 inches, whereas on the Range Rover hybrid version, maximum size is 21 inches. One inch less can make all the difference. The shape of the Range Rover is classic. It's quite boxy, but it looks good. As good as the Bentayga, I think from the side I prefer the Bentayga. Finally, let's compare the back ends of these cars. Now, I like the rear of this Bentayga. It's sort of like a Continental GT that's been jacked up slightly. The Range Rover, it's okay. There's something slightly bulbous about it. A bit like a baboon on heat. Also, there's some fakery going on, as I'll illustrate now with my Rimac stick of truth so that's a fake diffuser there and these exhaust surrounds not exactly fake they're more of an exaggeration because you've just got these single little exhaust pipes in there whereas those on the Bentayga each have a real exhaust pipe in those openings I think they're a bit better in terms of pricing though this thing's £155,000 starting this 75 grand and I don't think the Bentayga looks twice as expensive as the Range Rover do you agree with me let me know in the comments below oh and if you're thinking about buying a new car and you want to make sure you're paying a fair price click on the pop-out banner up there I'll follow the link in the description to get a car wow alternatively just google help me car wow so my team and I'll help you choose the right car for you and get it for a fair price from one of our trusted dealers it's here on the inside where the Bentley starts to feel twice as expensive as the Range Rover it's just lovely in here absolutely gorgeous just the material quality the design admittedly this does have the ten thousand pound mulliner pack which includes like quilted stitching on the seats these lovely aluminium pedals and a bit more diamond quiltiness here on the doors great a few buttons feel a little bit kind of cheap for such an expensive car but overall it's just exquisite invitation system's good as well it's not the best in the world but it's pretty simple and easy to use and you've got a digital driver's display which is nice i love bentley interiors oh look leatheriness oh and a double sun visor that's worth the asking price alone now while the inside of the range rover isn't quite as luxury as that bentayga it's still very, very nice. Material quality is good. The layout's pretty clean. I actually think the buttons on the steering wheel look more expensive, but they're an absolute arse to use. These touch-sensitive buttons, which also operate when you press them in as well. It's so confusing. And the whole infotainment system in this Range Rover is just not as good as in the Bentley. The digital driver's display is a little bit more confusing and harder to set up just as you want it. And the main infotainment screen just isn't as responsive or as easy to use. Wait a minute. 
This car's average economy figure is saying 23 miles per gallon. Yet the plug-in hybrid version of the Range Rover Sport is supposed to do over 80 miles per gallon. Same with the Bentayga, yet that's only averaging 25 miles per gallon. You see, with these plug-in hybrids, unless you constantly plug them in and use them on electric power, you get nowhere near the claimed economy figures. So what's the point of them? Well, most people don't buy these for their economy. They buy them because you can save a stack of cash on company car tax. For instance, the company car tax bill for this plug-in hybrid version of the Range Rover Sport will work out in the UK if you're a high-rate taxpayer to about £500 a month. If you were to have the normal petrol three litre straight six, that'll cost you about £900 a month in company car tax. So you're saving a ton of cash just because it's a plug-in hybrid and therefore has lower emissions. Same with the Bentayga. So that plug-in hybrid version of the Bentayga, it's going to cost you about £1,000 in company car tax if you're a high-rate taxpayer. If you had the V8, that'd be £2,000 a month. That's the main reason people buy these plug-in hybrids, not to save the environment. And most people who buy these cars will spend a lot of time on the motorway where they'll never use any of their electric power at all. They'll just be running off their internal combustion engine. Speaking of which, let's see what they like to drive on the motorway. This Range Rover Sport is lovely. It's very comfy. These seats, the armrests just at the right height. They're just chilling and just soaking up the miles. Now you can actually drive an electric power at motorway speeds, but you'll soon rinse through your battery. Press the hold button and then it will just hold the charge so you can keep some battery for when you're in town. Another thing you can do actually is just use the optional cruise control system to just take the strain out of the driving. Now it costs over £2,000 part of an option pack, but it's fairly decent and it'll keep you a safe distance from the car in front and auto steer as well, so you can just chill. I don't think it's the best system on the market at hocking you up to the centre of the lane, but it's good enough and it just takes a strain out of long distances. Speaking of which, this is quite a big square looking car. You do get a bit of wind noise because it's got quite big wing mirrors and it's got this big flat front as well but on the whole it's pretty blooming quiet in here and comfy lovely can the Bentley be any better on the motorway now with the Bentayga it's got automatic cruise control with lane keeping assist though that is part of a six thousand pound pack ever so slightly better than that in the Range Rover but they're both really good and I'd always want them fitted if you're doing lots of motorway miles and lots of motorway miles in this Bentayga are even more relaxing I think it's ever so slightly quieter that suspension is just that little bit better. Is it significantly better as the price suggests? No, there's not that much difference in it, but this does just about have the edge. But then, so it should at this price. The thing about Bentley is, is they're not only good for driving yourself, but also for being driven in. You could use the Bentayga as a chauffeur car, because there's loads of room here in the back lock and you can slide the rear seats and you can recline them. You can even carry three people in the back at once, because this central seat is quite wide. Though there is a bit of a lump in the floor, but it doesn't matter too much because there's loads of foot space. Another good thing about the Bentayga is that it's really good for carrying babies because it's dead easy to mount a baby seat in this car. Got eyes fixed anchor points that you can just get to easy because you just remove some covers and there's loads of room to even fit one of those bulky rear facing seats here in the back. The thing I've noticed in this car is this look picnic tables for your children or maybe to do a bit of work on we being chauffeured. Lovely mechanism on them but then it should be because believe it or not these picnic tables they cost £1,700. Uh, no thanks, I think I'll eat in rather than take away. Here at the back of the Range Rover Sport, you can recline the seats, like in the Bentayga, but you can't slide them forwards or backwards. However, you do have a flat floor, so there's more foot space if you need to carry three in the back at once. Though the central seat isn't quite as comfy as in the Bentley. Also, it's hard to fit a child seat in the back of this Range Rover Sport. Part of the problem is the fact that the ice fix anchor points are a bit harder to get to because there's no flip off covers and there's not quite as much room back here. So you do have to push the front passenger seat forward a bit to fit a bulky rear facing seat. And overall, it's not quite as roomy for knee room as that Bentayga. It's a slightly bigger car, the Bentley. Though I guess that if you want even more space, you could just get the normal Range Rover hybrid. In fact, if you want to see my full in-depth video review of that car, click on the pop-out banner up there or follow the link in the description. Though, obviously, the big Range Rover isn't quite as sporty as the Sport. Anyway, speaking of sporty, let's do some sporty driving in these sporty SUVs. Both of these SUVs are supposed to have a sporty element to them, so let's see how well they handle on a twisty road. I've got this Range Rover Sport in its sportiest setting, so it's stiffened at the suspension, it's shot the throttle response, made the engine motor gearbox combo a bit more responsive. And it does an alright job of going around the corners, this. It stays relatively flat, but there's no getting away from the fact it is a big Range Rover, so it never feels fully sporty. 
And the hybrid version is even less sporty than normal because it just carries more weight. If you compare this to the three liter straight six petrol, which has the same power, it's 200 kilos heavier because of the battery and the motor. And as a result, it just doesn't feel too responsive when you're driving it. It's a bit of a shame that. Now let's see if the Bentley feels a bit sportier than the Range Rover Sport. So got it in dynamic mode. And this is even heavier than the Range Rover. It's 2.6 tons. But somehow it hides its weight. I've got a bit more faith in the handling. But yet again, just like with the hybrid version of the Range Rover, this thing is about 200 kilos heavier than the equivalent powered V8 model. As a result, it just doesn't feel quite as lively, doesn't feel as sure-footed, and it's got the whole thing where you've got the motor, the gearbox, and the internal combustion engine have to work in sync to give you smooth, effortless progress, and it's just not quite as good as just having the gearbox and the V8 engine like you do in the V8 version of this Bentayga. For me, hybrids are always a compromise. They add weight to your vehicle. They just aren't quite so smooth to drive. They are, in fact, the worst of all worlds. The only real reason to have them is for that tax benefit as far as I'm concerned but hey if you get one as a company car you save so much money with them and if you can plug them in and you are just pooping around town then you can just use them like an electric vehicle but they're just not as good as an electric vehicle because in an electric vehicle if you want to accelerate you floor it and you take off immediately with this it has to pause and think for a while not quite as bad as in the Range Rover but still not perfect and while this does sound better than Range Rover it doesn't sound as good as the V8 version hmm. Now let's talk about the boot capacities of these cars. So on paper, the Range Rover has a bigger boot. 573 litres compared to 479 litres for the Bentayga. However, all is not what it seems because I think that Land Rover actually measures the boot capacity of this car all the way to the roof line, whereas in the Bentayga, Bentley measures it up to the window line. Because while these boots pretty much have the same width. The Bentegas is deeper and it's taller. Also, being hybrids, they both have their batteries underneath the boot floor. It doesn't really make that much difference to the capacity of the hybrid version of the Bentega. It's only a few litres less than the petrol version, whereas you can see this ridge on the Range Rover there and its batteries reduce the boot capacity of the Range Rover Sport by about 50 litres over the petrol car. In terms of towing capability, because you might want to tow with these cars, this can tow 2.5 tonnes, whereas this can tow 3.5 tonnes. And speaking of pulling power, let's launch the cars. This Range Rover Sport Hybrid is supposed to do 0-60 in 5.9 seconds, but let's see what the specialist timing gear says about that. And launch it, here we go. Don't know what that was in the back. Actually took off pretty well. Ooh. 5.5 seconds. That's impressive. I've now jumped into the Bentayga and on paper it is supposed to be quicker. It's supposed to do it in 5.2 seconds but what's the reality going to be like? Let's do this and find out. Doesn't really feel any quicker but what will the numbers say? There's really nothing in it. Nord 60 5.52. So not as quick as Bentley say and only marginally quicker than the Range Rover. Hmm. So then, what's my final verdict? Well, if you're going for the hybrid version of these cars, you're doing it to save money in terms of company car tax. And while the Bentley is better in every single way than the Range Rover Sport, apart from maybe its face, it's not twice as good, yet it's twice the price. So. Do you know what? I think the Range Rover comes close in terms of luxury and in the way it is to drive to the Bentayga, but it's a whole lot cheaper. And that's why it wins this test. I hope you'll enjoy the video. If you did, give it a like. If you don't agree with my verdict, let me know in the comments below. Click there to watch more videos. And if you click on that box there, you can go to Car Wow and we can help you sell your car. All you have to do is upload some photos, some details, and we'll make sure you get a fair price for it. And the price you get will be the price you're quoted.